Most baseball fans have no idea who he is. If you're a fan of old baseball cards, you probably have heard of him. But if you're one of the many thousands of Cuban baseball fans, you know who this Cuban baseball Hall of Famer is. Roman Mejias passed away on this day one year ago. He was 97. I put out a tribute show for Roman a month after he passed, and I told a story about just how nice of a guy he was. Today's show is a day of remembrance for Roman, and I will tell you another story, once again, of how nice he really was, and how Roman was able to make a racist owner a little less racist. So let's go. Is what I usually would say right about now, but this episode is different. Man. That's a great shot of what is known as the catch. Have I ever showed you that before? I found it in a pile of newspapers that my dad brought up a couple of years ago, and I've been using some of the stuff in those newspapers in my shows, like this picture of the catch. And it ties in with the Don Klein autograph my dad has and is part of this show's story. While researching the 1962 Houston Colt 45's inaugural season, I found some great info about Roman. So at, at this point in the show, I will say, so let's go. There was only one season in his 13 year career when Roman did not appear in the majors. That was 1956 when he played for the Pittsburgh Pirates affiliate, the Hollywood Stars. That's when my dad got the autograph that's in the thumbnail. He saw Roman play in three different cities against three different teams that season. So, I don't know if it was at Seal Stadium or when he was in L.A. visiting family that summer and took in a Stars game at Gilmore Field. Or maybe it was at Lane Field when he was in San Diego and saw the Padres game, who happened to be playing the Stars. Last time I was in town, I asked my dad about Roman Mejias, and right away he goes, he was an outfielder, good hitter, played for the Stars. I was going to ask him where he got Roman's autograph, but I didn't. For five years, my dad handed that autograph book to hundreds of players, so I don't think he'd recall getting Roman's autograph as much as he would remember the time he got Willie Mays. I'm probably wrong and should have asked. Because just recently, out of the blue, dad told me another Willie Mays memory from his 1956 spring training encounter when he walked up to Willie who was sitting in an empty dugout talking to a friend. My dad told me he remembers the way Willie was sitting. He said, Willie was leaning to the side and had his legs casually crossed with his hat pushed up and slightly to the side. You've seen the photos. He probably looked pretty cool sitting there, but the way my pop talks about it, he acted pretty cold. I always like it when I can bring Willie Mays into one of my stories, and it's even better when it involves my dad's recollection of his encounter with the Say Hey Kid. Speaking of Willie Mays... Two of the most iconic plays in sports history happened on either side of the country in two different sports more than a quarter century apart, yet both plays are known by the same two words, the catch. The first was in New York at the 1954 World Series with the Cleveland Indians, Vic Wirtz at the plate. He hits a fly ball that goes deep. New York Giants' Willie Mays sprints to the wall, and with his back to the plate just before the wall, Willie makes the catch. The second was in San Francisco, 1982, at the NFC Championship game when the 49ers beat the Cowboys when a scrambling Joe Montana throws a high pass to the corner of the end zone and Dwight Clark makes a fingertip catch. An incredible play in a big-time game. That's why it's known as the catch. Have I shown you that photo? I've shown you Willie Mays' autograph before, and I'll show you Vic Wirtz another time. Turns out my pop has signatures from participants in both of these historic events because he also has the autograph of the guy who threw the ball, not the baseball, but the football quarterback, Joe Montana. At the end of my season two, I showed you an autograph photo of Joe that he personalized to my dad. Well, here's another 49er tie-in to the football version of the catch. On the call in the booth for the 49ers that day was Bay Area Hall of Fame sportscaster Don Klein, and in an odd to complete the circle on this portion of today's episode, in an odd way, I should say, the 1956 Roman Mejias autograph is signed right next to a 1955 Don Klein in Dad's autograph book. I figure the book accidentally closed when my dad handed it to Roman, and 
Roman just opened it up and signed. On a side note, last month I took pictures of all the pages in every San Francisco seal book my dad has. It's the first time I opened them all up, and by doing that I found two that have real nice Don Klein autographs where he signed next to his photo. Another thing I found and I'm really excited about is a 1955 Seals versus the Cleveland Indians. It's really cool seeing all the legendary names on that Indians roster, but the best part was confirming where and when my dad got his 1955 Indians autographs. There's around a dozen consecutive pages in the autograph book that go back and forth between Seals and Indians players. I'll do an episode and I'll show it all at once. But I still have three more Indians autograph shows to do, with Vic Wirtz being one of them. Getting back to Roman Mejias, or should I say Ray, because that's what he was called in the USA, just like his pirate teammate, Roberto Clemente, had his name, shall we say, shortened and Americanized. Early on, Roman Mejias had a very unique batting stance with his arms way up high to his neck and his elbows tucked tight to his body. You can see that in one of his cards. Late in his career, on his own, at spring training, he opened up his stance and changed his swing. In his previous six MLB seasons, he had a total of 17 homers. In 1962, he hit 24 alone. Roman Mejias was taken in the expansion draft by the Houston Colt 45s in their inaugural 1962 season, and he was a starting right fielder in the club's first ever game. And this is what I learned about him while reading up on the 1962 Colt 45s. Roman Mejias is the first player to hit a home run in franchise history, and he did that in the club's first ever game, twice which they won. A few weeks later, on May 10, 1962, he hit the Colt 45's first ever inside the park home run, and he did it standing up. Now we go back to May 4, 1958, and who's the first ever Pittsburgh Pirate to step up to the plate to face the newly relocated Giants? Roman Mejias. And at that bat, he hit a home run, and went on to hit two more home runs on that day. Go back even further to 1955, and who's part of the first ever all-Latin outfield in MLB history? Yep. Roman Mejias. He did that when he trotted onto the field alongside Roberto Clemente and Felipe Montemayor. Now here's my two cents. I don't like to throw around the term racist, so I don't. So people are just raised different, or they're old and stuck in their ways, good or bad, and make their judgment on color based on experiences they've had over the years and what they see going on around them now. But when you own a ball club and you're the head of an organization and you would rather have your team lose than have colored players on your team, yeah, I would say that's pretty racist. Do we know this for a fact? Well, Boston Red Sox were the last team to integrate in MLB and were basically forced to do so by the league because longtime Red Sox owner Tom Yawkey wasn't going to do it on his own, so it seemed. Yet people can change, and Tom Yawkey quickly grew fond of, who? Roman Mejias. Well, he was with the Red Sox for a short time, and the owner even went out of his way and did all he could to get Roman's family out of Cuba, and he did. Whereas the Colt 45 showed no interest in Roman's personal situation. So... Like I said at the top of the show, I'll give you another example of not only how nice, but also honorable Mr. Mejias was. So, Roman is coming to the end of his career, yet he is so well liked by the Red Sox that they send him a very nice minor league contract for the time of $2,000 a month. Due to his poor English, he thought the contract was for $2,000 a season, and said he would rather retire. So the Red Sox sent him a second contract that offered more money. When Roman read the new contract, he realized his mistake and sent it back, offering to sign the first one they sent him. But Red Sox owner Tom Yawkey liked Roman so much that he gave him the raise anyway. How nice was Roman? When your personality can turn one of the most racist owners in all of pro sports into your friend, that's how nice. I'm sure there's plenty of other wonderful traits that can be said about Cuban Baseball Hall of Famer Roman Mejias. <laughs>